At the height of the French Revolution during a period ominously known as the Terror, the Jacobins oversaw the execution or massacre of more than 10,000 men, women and children thought to be conspiring against the revolution. Many of those killed were members of the purged aristocracy. Herself an aristocrat, Baroness Orxy wrote a romantic tale of a secret crusader on a mission to rescue these victims from Madame Guillotine. First published as a play and followed by a novel in 1905, The Scarlet Pimpernel was issued by the Folio Society in 1997. The book arrives in a plain red slipcase that is fairly standard Folio Society fare. Inside is a book bound in cream vegetable parchment paper. This is a durable paper with a smooth parchment-like texture. The front board is printed and blocked with a design featuring a guillotine, tricolour and the all-seeing eye of the Committee of Public Safety. The design is surrounded by a gilt picture frame and embellished with gold and silver foil. The spine bears the title in large text, also with gold embellishment. As always, the binding is sewn, here with thematically appropriate red, white and blue head and tail bands, and the book has red end papers. The principal typography is set in Fornia, with display appearing to be a larger, italic variant of the same face. Chapters are also headed with Roman numerals and an ornamented rule for a bit of extra flair. The paper is Caxton Wove, a common choice for folio books of the era. Like all wove papers, it has a smooth, even surface, but Caxton is entirely matte. The paper is heavy enough to offer good opacity. The book is illustrated in an interesting collage style by Lucy Weller. Each illustration shows the book's protagonists as composites constructed from various portraits and other paintings. The style seems to be quite divisive and some of the images are more effective than others, but overall I enjoyed this creative take on the subject matter and the use of period paintings as source material for the collages makes for an interesting and thematically relevant collision of old and new. There are seven images in total, including a frontispiece styled after a face playing card. Turning to the story, The Scarlet Pimpernel defied my expectations. Although the novel is often pitched as a classic adventure tale, most of the book is occupied with a kind of court intrigue rather than high swashbuckling action. That makes it more of a slow burn than other adventure tales of the era, although it also creates a bit of breathing room for our opinions of the characters to develop. There's an introduction by Hilary Mantel offering some biographic notes on the author and the genesis of the novel, as well as a slightly more penetrating analysis of some of the book's themes and stereotypes.